and good morning. We thank you for joining the Come As You Are Ministries once again for another beautiful and blessed Sunday morning. We thank God for all of his blessings that he has bestowed upon us. And we know we didn't deserve any of them, but he looked beyond all of our faults and he saw our need. And we thank God for his love and kindness and his grace and mercy. And as we always say, that this is a day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because God is good all the time and all the time, God is good. We thank you for your continued love and support and prayers of this ministry. And we want you to know that we love you all as well and we're praying for you all that God will continue to bless you. God will continue to open doors for you. That he will continue to make a way out of no way for you on your behalf. Uh, today, we really want to uh, especially pray for those that are, are dealing with uh, sickness in your body, those that are going through in your mind. We, we're praying for you today that God will work everything out. God will give you the strength that you need. God will open doors for you. And God will take away whatever that is that's troubling you in mind. That God will take it and move it out of the way and bless you to continue to go forward in his name. Well, let's get right into, good morning, good morning. Let's get right into what God has for us. We're looking at a very familiar scripture, one verse, Isaiah 40 and 31. Isaiah 40 and 31. And it reads, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank and we praise you once again for another great and glorious opportunity to come before this, your people. And as always, oh God, we ask you to hide us behind the cross that they will only hear and see you, that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praises out of everything that is said and done here. And Father God, we ask you, oh God, to just help us to stay focused on your word, your will, and your way. Because Lord, truly, we all need to hear a word from you. We all need to be led, Father God. We're, a lot of us are going through things right now, Lord, and we just need that word from you, that touch from you that will straighten everything out. So, Father God, we just put everything and all things in your hands this morning. Lord, bless us. Bless our time here together. Come on in and visit with us, Lord, and open your word up to us and speak to us, Father God, this day. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We adore you for us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. We're looking at the subject, I'm waiting on God to move. I'm waiting on God to move. In this time, in these days and times in which we live right now, we're all waiting on something. Whether it's a new job or a new house, you're waiting on something. Some of us are waiting on God to open doors for us physically and mentally that will straighten out our whole lives, that will fix our every situation that we're going through. We must understand and know that God has the power to deal with the physical as well as the spiritual. So with that being said, I know that I know that I know that God has my back. You see, some people are more focused on the material things. We are forgetting about the Lord. We're more focused on the house. We're more focused on the money. We're more focused on the job. We're more focused on relationships. We're more focused on friendships. And we miss the fact that we really need God in our lives. We miss the fact that if we get hooked up with the right thing, we get hooked up with God, he'll take care of all the rest of the stuff. But for some reason, we look over the relationship with God and we're trying to grasp at the resources. We're trying to get everything we can get. And the problem with that is we are seeking the creation and not the creator. I'm gonna say that again. We are seeking the creation and not the creator. See, what do you mean by that, Ray? It's that we're seeking stuff. A lot of us that feel like that, that's a part of our life. That's all we look for. That's all we desire. But we should really have a desire to have a closer relationship and a walk with the Lord. Why? Because the Bible says in Matthew 6 and 33, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. In other words, God will take care of it all. Whatever that thing is, whatever you're standing in the need of, whatever you need to be delivered from, whatever you need fixed in your life, just know God can do it. God can and will 
make a way out of no way on your behalf. He will turn your sorrow into joy. He will heal your feeble body. And that's why I don't know about nobody else, but that's why I'm waiting on him. I'm waiting on him. Why? Because God has all power in his hand. I'm waiting on him because I know he can fix whatever I'm going through, whatever's broken, whatever I'm dealing with. He can make it all right. When you get weak, he'll make you strong. That's why in our text in Isaiah 40, you see where he said, they that wait upon the Lord. Our biggest problem is, saints, we're so busy trying to do it on our own. We're so busy trying to work things out our way. We're so busy trying to figure it out. But I heard the old saying, said, why are you trying to figure it out? God's already worked it out. Why are you trying to figure out what steps? You need to take to get to where you're trying to get. God has already fixed it. He's just waiting on you to come to him. He's just waiting on you to ask him. So a lot of times we need to learn to sit back and wait on God. Sit back and wait on him to fix it. Sit back and wait on him to open the door. Sit back and wait on him to turn that thing around. Sit back, wait on him to fix the relationship because we must understand and know that we can't do it by ourselves. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. So in other words, what does that mean? I need him. I got to wait on him. I got to move when he tells me to move. Speak when he tells me to speak. Stop when he tells me to stop. Go when he tells me to go. I got to move at his call. You see, I'm so glad that God has it all under control. I'm so glad that I've learned to wait on God. Because while you're waiting, you already know God is going to fix it. That you already know that there's a miracle in your sight. You already know that there's deliverance on the horizon. God is going to fix just what you got going on. But our biggest problem is while we're waiting, and instead of us praying, instead of us doing the things that we need to do, and we'll get to those later on, we spend more time mumbling and grumbling and complaining about what we're going through. We spend more time being upset and mad because of what we're dealing with. We spend more time getting upset because stuff doesn't come as fast as we would like for it to come. Things are not moving the way we would like for them to move. And one of the biggest problems that a lot of us do not have, we don't have no patience. We don't like to wait for stuff. We want it right then. We want it to be just like Burger King, our way, right away. When I want it, I want it right then. But we got to understand, sometimes you got to wait. Even with our children, we have to teach them patience. Son, daughter, you got to learn to wait. It's not going to come overnight. Changes don't happen overnight. But they come. You got to be patient. You got to be like Job. Job said, though you slay me, yet will I trust him. And Job said, out of all of my appointed time, I will wait till my change Come. Job was going through a lot more than some of us could ever imagine going through. But Job had patience to wait. Job understood that God will, some way, somehow, he's going to work it out. Some way, somehow, he's going to open a door. Some way, somehow, all of this is going to be over soon. But you got to learn to what? Be patient. But some of us, we mumble. We grumble. We get mad. We go to fussing at God. God, why am I going through this? Why am I dealing with this? Why you got me going through this here? Why am I always got one problem after the next? Sometimes God is trying to teach you some stuff. And you didn't pass the test the first time. So you got to do a retake. And a lot of us, we're doing a whole lot of retaking. Why? Because when we had the opportunity to pass the test, we didn't do it. When we had the opportunity to do what God wanted us to do, we went right back. And so now what? You're right back at the same thing again. But I'm learning sometimes. Just be patient. Mike, don't mumble about it. Don't grumble about it. Don't get mad. Just be patient. Take it to the Lord and pray. And while you're doing it, just wait on it. We got to learn to be comfortable in waiting on God to move. We got to learn to understand that God orchestrates everything. The Bible says the steps of a good man are what? Ordered by the Lord. We got to wait on him. We got to move when he say move. When he told Abram to move, come out from among them. Go to a place I will show you. He said, I'm going to show you where to go. He said, but move like I want you to move. 
And those, what that song say, you move like this, just like that. We got to move just like that, just the way he wants us to move. In his word, in his will, and his way. We only can move and go how he wants us to. And so with that being said, Reverend, what am I supposed to do while I'm waiting? Great question. Glad you asked. This is what we should be doing while we're waiting. Number one, you need to learn to pray. In season and out of season. You need to learn to pray every day without ceasing. Those three Hebrew boys were in that fiery furnace. They were going through, but the fact of the matter is why they were in there and why they were waiting on God to move. However that is, they were praying. They were asking God to intervene, asking God to show us what to do. And while they were in there, they decided to have church. Why? Because they knew even in the midst of all of this, hey, it's still time to praise him. So while they were going through, they began to pray. Daniel, when he was in the lion's den, what did Daniel do while he was in there surrounded by all of those lions? Daniel began to pray. What did Paul and Silas do at midnight? Paul and Silas decided to do what? Pray and start seeking God right there. They knew God was going to move. While we're sitting in this Roman jail bound, we're going to wait on it. But while we're waiting, we're going to pray. Why? Because we know that we're talking to the right person. Why? We know that we're hooked up to the source who gives us what? The resources. He's going to take care of all of this. So I'm going to wait on him. And I'm praying. And it's about what you're praying about, who you're praying to. Because a lot of us, we got a laundry list. Or like I used to say, we got a Christmas list. But we got to understand, God is not Santa Claus. We don't need to come in with a Christmas list. A lot of times you need to let that stuff go and ask God to work on you. If you want your atmosphere to change, if you want stuff to change in your life, it starts with you. Ask God to work on you. And when God begins to work on you, stuff around you begins to change. A lot of people may not want to be around you no more, but that's fine. Keep on pressing in Jesus' name. Like I told you last Sunday, don't give up, don't give in. Keep on pressing. Why? Because God is going to make a way out of nowhere. But even still, while you're praying, number two, we got to learn to stand still and wait on it. We got to learn to only move when he say move. A lot of us, like I said before, try to move before the Lord says move and nothing works out. We wonder why it seems to be taking forever for stuff to take place. It's because of the simple fact we try to do it on our own. Not only that, we have to learn to move and we have to learn to wait on him. If you read 2 Chronicles 20, 15 through 17, it tells us that the battle doesn't belong to us. That's the, one of the reasons why you got to wait. It's not your battle to fight. It's God. God going to take care of it. He's going to take care of every trial, every tribulation, every battle, everything that the devil throws at you. All you got to do is call on God, stand still, and wait on him. He's going to fix it. People will tell you, no, you can't have that. People will tell you, you're not going to be able to obtain that. But all you got to do is say, Lord, it's in your hand. It'll come when you say it's going to come. It'll move when you say it's going to move. Things will break loose when God says it's time to break loose. They had to understand. Jehoshaphat and them were going through and they had all these people coming at them. But they heard a word from the Lord that says, stand still and do what? See the salvation of of the Lord. What does that mean? I got to learn to be still sometimes. And then we also, even in being still, we got to learn to be quiet and allow God to do what he's doing. Y'all didn't hear me. We, we got to learn to be quiet sometimes because a lot of us love to talk and we love to tell folk what God is doing for us. And I'm not saying that it's not, that it's bad to witness for God. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is when God is doing stuff in your life and he's strategically moving stuff, not everybody's going to understand what God is doing for you. Not everybody's going to understand what God is calling you to do. So sometimes it's best just to be quiet, sit back, and allow God to just move stuff around. And you just watch him move and be grateful for the move. Number three, I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hand while I'm waiting on him because I know that the Lord is going to work it out sooner or later. I don't know when, I don't know where, but I know he's going to work it out. So I'm going to sit back and I'm going to wait on it. Go back to Job. Job said, out of all of my appointed time, I'm going to wait till my change comes. Job lets us know how important it is to be patient and wait on God. 
Job lets us know that. When in order to get through these things in life, look around us. This world is going through so much. But in the midst of what we're going through, in the midst of how rough it is, in the midst of the losing of the job, in the midst of the sickness, in the midst of the pain, understand and know that God is with you. It may not move today. It may not turn out today. But trust me, it's coming. Your deliverance is on the way. Your peace is on the way. Your joy is on the way. That love that you're seeking for is on the way. All you got to do is be patient and wait on God. But my favorite thing to do, ha, glory to God, my favorite thing to do while I'm waiting on God to move, my favorite thing to do is praise him while I'm waiting on it. Give him the glory while I'm waiting on it. Why? Because if he brought me through all of that other stuff, trust me, he's going to bring you through all of this. If he did it before, he'll do it again. And while you're waiting on him, keep on praising him. While you're riding down the road, keep on praising him. While you're walking around through your house, just start humming a little song and start praising him. Why? Because you know that your blessing is on the way. You know that your blessing is right around the corner. You know that that miracle is about to be performed. Look at Acts 16. What did Paul and Silas do? At midnight, they began the same song and they began to pray. That's why I love this story because things begin to happen when we begin to praise God. Your praise is your weapon. Your praise will help you get through. So sometimes you just got to praise him. Thank him for the things he's done. Thank him for the stuff that he's brought you through. Thank him for the ways that he's already made. Thank him for the healings that he's already given you. Thank him and praise him, not only for the stuff that he's already done. Thank him and praise him in advance for what he's about to do. Thank him and praise him for the healing that he's about to give you. Thank him and praise him for the doors that he's about to open for you. Thank him and praise him for all he's about to do and work out on your behalf. We look at Joshua chapter 6. They were quiet as they marched around. But on that very last day, Joshua told them, shout for the city belongs to you. Shout for the victory is yours. Somebody ought to be shouting this morning. Why? Because the victory is yours. Shout that house belongs to you. Shout that car belongs to you. Shout because that job belongs to you. Shout because your healing is on the way. Shout because your deliverance is on the way. Shout because your peace is on the way. Glory to God. Shout because God is about to open some doors for you. Shout because everything is about to work out in your favor. Somebody ought to shout this morning because why? God is going to turn it around just for you. Just for you. And sometimes you got to speak over yourself. Say, self, I command you to be healed, be delivered, and be set free. Somebody ought to say that this morning. I command you to be healed, be delivered, and be set free. We got to learn to wait on it. Why? Because God's going to work it out. God's going to fix it. For some of you that want to know <laughs> what I'm waiting on, I'm waiting on the Lord to move on all of our behalf. I want to see God deliver some of us because some of us are going through some things really bad that people don't understand. People put you down because you're dealing with mental illness. I need you to understand and I want to interject this right here. Mental illness is something that's real. It's not just a plaything. There's some people in this world that are going through in their mind. They don't need you to put them down. They don't need you to talk about them. They need you to uplift them. They need you to pray with them. They need you to talk with them. They need you to come by and have a cup of coffee with them. They need you to worship and praise God right along with them for their deliverance, for their healing, for their breakthrough, for that miracle that they need in their life. They need you to grab them and hug them and let them know that you know what? God got the power, baby, to deliver you, to heal you, to make everything all right. God's got the power to work it out. Glory to God. He'll do it, and the reason I know he'll do it, because I tried it for myself. The reason I know he'll do it, I've seen him work, not only just in me, but I've seen him work in others. I know he'll make it all right. So I'm sitting back, and I'm waiting on God to open some doors. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm sitting and waiting on God 
to turn some things around. We're sitting and we're waiting on God to make some stuff plain to us. Why? Because he is a God that never fails. He is a God that will hear and answer prayer. So I need you to understand why you're waiting. You need to be praying. While you're waiting, just stand still. While you're standing still, you ought to start praising him. You ought to start giving him glory. You ought to start giving him the honor. You ought to start giving him the praise that's due to his name. Why? He didn't have to wake you up this morning, but he did. He didn't have to deliver you, but he did. He didn't have to make a way out of no way for you, but he did. He did. Just that. Just for you. Let, let, me, let me get out of here lest I keep you too long. The clock on the wall says that's all. It's been real fun. Ugh, oh, glory to God. But Rep. McNeil got to run. See you later, alligator. And after a while, crocodile. But for those of you that didn't understand what I've said today, those of you that couldn't grasp what I've said because there's so much clouding your mind, there's so much standing in your way, there's so much blocking your vision, there's so much stopping your ears up. I, I want you to understand that if you couldn't get all of that, do me this one favor. Look to the hills for which come as your help because all of your help come from the Lord. Look to the hills for your strength. Look to the hills for your peace. Look to the hills for your joy. Look to the hills for your deliverance. Look to the hills for your way maker, your miracle worker, your promise keeper, your light in the darkness. Look to the hills for the one that will make everything all right. Look to the hills for the one that will turn it around. Look to the hills for the one that we're waiting on to open doors. The one that we're waiting on to fix it. The one that we're waiting on to deliver it. The one that we're waiting on to turn it all around. Somebody needs to know that God got the power to do anything but fail. He will rescue you. He'll deliver you. All you got to do is be patient and wait on it. All you got to do is grab hope to God's unchanging hand. That's why I love that song. The time is filled with swift transition. None on earth or moon can stand. Build your hope on things eternal and hold to God unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. To my God, unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold to his hand. To my God, unchanging hand. You ought to build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. We need to learn to hold on to it and wait on it because I promise you, he will make a way out of nowhere. God bless you and we love you.